Brewery stock Heineken Malaysia saw its shares hit an all-time high of 29 ringgit 50 cent this morning after rising by as much as 5.36% as investors bet that China's reopening will bode well for the stock. Heineken topped the gainers list today with a closing price of 29 ringgit up 3.57%, valuing the group at 8.76 billion ringgit. Meanwhile, Carlsberg Brewery Malaysia, the third top gainer on the local bourse, jumped as much as 2.8% to 24 ringgit 20 sen in morning trade from its previous closing price of 23 ringgit 54 sen. It closed at its intraday high of 24 ringgit 20 sen, bringing the company a market value of 7.4 billion ringgit. Of the 13 analysts covering Heineken, 11 have buy calls while the remaining two have hold recommendations. The average 12 month target price for Heineken is 29 ringgit 64 sen. For Carlsberg, there are eight buy calls and five hold, with a 12-month average target price of 26 ringgit 59 sen. In a recent note, CGSCIMB Research said it expects the reopening of China's borders to bode well for consumer counters, as Chinese tourists were Malaysia's third largest source of international arrivals and second highest spending tourists in 2019. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim says the MACC made an independent decision to investigate Persatu and freeze the opposition party's bank accounts. Anwar spoke at a post-cabinet meeting press conference today. He said his administration had never instructed the MACC to move against Persatu and that the anti-graft agency's probe was sparked by reports to the police and MACC on the alleged misuse of funds by Persatu. It also followed his discovery of projects which involved high expenditure that did not go through a tender process. These were the Janawi Bawa and flood mitigation projects. Anwar added the MACC found over 300 million ringgit in Prasatu's accounts and called on the party's leaders to explain how it accumulated the funds in such a short time. He stressed that enforcement agencies as well as the judiciary remain independent and said it was irresponsible for Bersatu to accuse the government of using the Anti-Graft Commission as a political tool. Separately, Bersatu President Tan Sri Mohidin Yassin said the party will write to the MACC to request that it lift the freeze order on the party's bank accounts. He said this is crucial to enable the administration of Bersatu to run smoothly and to ensure preparations for the upcoming six state elections are not impeded. Putrajaya has made further gains in its legal battle against the self-proclaimed heirs of the Sultan of Sulu. According to de facto law minister Azalina Othman Said, the Spanish Constitutional Court rejected the heir's appeal against the annulment of Gonzalo Stampa's appointment as the dispute arbitrator. This reinforced a decision on June 29, 2021 by the High Court of Justice of Madrid, which issued a ruling to annul the judicial appointment of Stampa. Azalina said the Spanish Constitutional Court threw out the appeal on the grounds that the heirs had withdrawn their claim to appoint an arbitrator following the Madrid Court's annulment decision, which meant that they had voluntarily abandoned the proceedings, which served as the basis for their constitutional appeal. The Spanish court had initially appointed Stampa in 2019. It retroactively invalidated his appointment and nullified all his actions as a purported arbitrator, including the alleged preliminary award that he had rendered in favour of the claimants in Madrid. Azalina said this decision is final, binding and directly enforceable and can only be subject to an extraordinary constitutional appeal if exceptional circumstances are met. KNM Group saw its shares close at its intraday high of 7 cents apiece after it announced that it is in talks with all its creditors to resolve the settlement of the monies due to them from the monetization of non-core assets and sale of its unit Borzik. The group recently defaulted on over 420 million ringgit in debts. It will accelerate its plans to monetize the assets under a disposal process based on a non-exclusive deal structure, which will also 
also naturally lead to higher cash values on disposal. In a filing to Bursa Malaysia, KNM said the repayments will be dealt with, addressed and or restructured under the proposed scheme of arrangement announced on December 16. In a separate filing, KNM said the monetization of assets is part of its regularization plan as required under the Bursa's listing requirements and it has about nine months to submit its regularization plan to the authorities for approval. The counter jumped 16.7% higher to its close of 7 sen for a market capitalization of 257.5 million ringgit. ASDN's independent auditors have noted that there is concern as to whether the company has the resources to continue operating its current business. Messrs CAS Malaysia issued an unmodified audit opinion with a material uncertainty related to going concern for the logistics company's FY22 financial statements. Based on the auditor's report, ASDN's current liabilities have exceeded its current assets by 22.79 million ringgit. As of September 30, 2022, the firm said the group had suffered an accumulated loss of 6.09 million ringgit. It said ASDN's ability to continue operating is dependent on the successful outcome and implementation of its current business plans to generate sufficient cash. CAS Malaysia highlighted that ASDN's net carrying amount of goodwill amounted to 3.19 million ringgit as of September 30, 2022, about 8% of the group's total assets. It also noted that the group's deferred expenditure totaled 26.72 million ringgit. About 67% of the total assets, which relate to expenditure incurred for SDN's proposed development project in Tumpat, Kelantan. In light of the flagged going concern, ASDN said it has undertaken more effective cost management measures and improved its financial position by disposing of a 24% equity interest in Maxillion Link Enterprises. ASDN's shares fell 6.3% to close at 7.5 cents apiece, valuing the ACE market listed group at 29.75 million ringgit. Mm-hmm.